fireworks issue, uh, the illegal fireworks. Uh, as far as the stamping goes, we cannot let anybody else out of the county respond to any other requests for resources outside the county. We're, we're down to minimum staffing as far as uh, uh, stamping goes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Fred, I think, I mean, uh, Joe, did you have a comment? Where, where in Monroe County are they? I don't know exactly where the where the fires are. There, there were like 700 fires this weekend. Is there a website on that? Uh, yes, I don't have it. Uh, I can email it to you. So yeah, you California know. State Office of Emergency Service has uh, a lot of that information on the web. I've been sending you guys the uh, morning briefings. Great. Okay, I haven't, I haven't seen this morning's yet. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Other departments? Looks like we have a couple of lines for position. Got two spots there. Take the, the, the red shirt, the red shirt, age before beauty. Oh, William Renee, Director of Public Works. Uh, I just want to inform you that we have now uh, acquired lifeguards for Weasel Lake Park, and we're going to open the swimming area tomorrow. And it's going to be open from 11 in the morning till 7 in the evening, uh, seven days a week for the rest of the summer. I do. Thank you. Did that other issue, Bill, on the uh, accessibility of Weiss Lake uh, for boating? Yes, we've taken, we've taken care of that. I'm Great. going to be providing a response. Thank you for that. Okay. And now, Mr. Porras. Good morning. Brad Porras, Air Pollution Control Officer. Just wanted to touch a little bit on what Supervisor Carrillo had mentioned in his report earlier today. Last week, we both attended the Good Neighbor Environmental Board. Uh, conference down in Calexico. It was a great opportunity for us to share our concerns and issues with um, a federally appointed body. Uh, as we all know, some, sometimes our, our issues and our voices are lost when it comes to dealing with the federal agencies. Uh, Supervisor Carrillo had very pointed comments uh, to open the conference and really set the stage uh, for everyone in, everyone in attendance to understand that even though we're small and out of sight and out of mind, we do have a lot of uh, important issues that need to be addressed, not only at the state and local level, but at the federal level. Um, we, we did get a good turnout, and there was an open air. They did listen to us, and we hope that they do take uh, our comments and our concerns back to Congress, and they will be issuing a report, I believe, of, uh, next uh, March is their next report to Congress. So they will be uh, sharing our concerns, we hope. I also wanted to give you an update on the goods movement. As you, Supervisor uh, Wyatt mentioned earlier, the priorities of goods movement throughout the country. Here locally, um, as you recall, we did apply for uh, the San Diego Border Corridor goods movement money, and we did secure $3.758 million, which um, we had to go back and do a little bit of change with the, with the um, cooperation of San Diego County APCD. We did acquire another 150000 from their portion that's going to go to Imperial County. So we will be going out for an RFP for, for projects probably sometime in July. It'll be open for about 60 days. Um, the Air District will need to hire a limited term position for that, which is paid from the administration portion of those grants. Uh, it's a requirement of the, of the application that got approved, so we will be hiring additional staff on a limited term basis just to, just to process um, the Prop 1B grant funding. Um, also, we, we just delivered the third phase uh, funding of the electric vehicles, so all those agencies that were approved have their electric vehicles now. And tomorrow is the fourth SIP for Denver. And before you leave that, and others are, are already applying for the next one. Yes, they are. <laughs> How much do those vehicles cost individually? Um, depend, it depends which ones you get. The ones with the flatbeds with the two seats, typically around $10,000. We, we get a break on the, we get a discount on it because we buy in bulk, I guess you'd say. Um, other ones like uh, the airport got a four-seater for shuttling people around. That one's a little bit more expensive. And then the ones we did for like the police department that has the sheriff lights on it. And, uh, I think that's what it costs. And those are all straight legal? Yes, they are. Even in Hopeville? <laughs> as long as you go through and get your own over Hopeville, you're not over life. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows about Hopeville? <laughs> had to add that. Tomorrow will be the fourth SIP working group meeting uh, for our planning efforts for the ozone and the PM10. 
we're, we're heading into crunch time on our timelines that have, that have been mandated on us in terms of the Federal Register noticing on our non-attainment status. Uh, myself and, and staff went to San Francisco on last Monday to meet with the Deputy Director of EPA to make sure that EPA is on board and up to date with uh, what we have done so far. It's, it's very technical at this point, back trajectories, modeling, emissions inventory updates. Um, so far it seems like uh, the Air District, the State Air Resources Board, and EPA are marching down the same road, which is going to be critical when it comes time for us to, uh, to adopt our SIPs, this board to adopt the SIP, and move forward to the State Air Resources Board adopting them as well. And that's all I have. Thank you, Brad. Any other departments or agencies? Then we'll move on into the discussion calendar. Begin with uh, item number 18. This is a uh, presentation on regarding the ongoing copper theft and Mike Adamio from IID. Superintendent. I'm supported by Sam Modicus behind me over here. He's with uh, Public Programs. We appreciate your time to be able to uh, present this information um, to you. Uh, we're here to there we go. There we go. just give you a, a small overview of the presentation this morning, some background on the problem, uh, why the, the problem is escalating. Uh, why it's a community problem. It's not just IID's problem, it's all of our problem. Uh, some of the legislation that's out to, uh, in the state level and uh, the new community outreach program that IID is, is uh, endeavoring to begin. And uh, as I mentioned in uh, the last few years, copper has gone from 70 cents to more than three dollars a pound like gas it's probably up even higher uh, daily. Uh, other metals are also seeing an increase in costs in aluminum, brass uh, and so forth and uh, I think you might just recall a few weeks ago we had a, uh, a theft of a number of brass urns in, in the Calexico Cemetery that uh, who would have thought that, that someone would go to those lines to, to take metal, but uh, they are. It's uh, becoming a, a very a large problem, not just here locally, but uh, statewide, even nationwide. And of course, when that, uh, because of this copper theft, because of the impacts to the energy department, it uh, translates into higher costs for us all. And uh, as mentioned in this uh, following slide, it's not just uh, victimless crime, it's not something that again happens just to the district, it happens to us all because it translates into higher costs. Uh, you see in these two pictures here, uh, if you can imagine someone taking a, a heavy metal lids off his vault and jumping in and energized conductors to come steal copper grounds. And yet that's what uh, we find in this case at the Chaw. And uh, of course we have to go in and make repairs and uh, at times uh, make uh, changes of cable. Just to give you an idea of the perspective, the impact to IID, a uh, statistic I uh, also up was uh, in 2007, it cost us $230,000 in response to replacements and uh, manpower. Uh, it compromises our reliability and safety of our uh, electrical system, very dangerous, and of course, uh, those individuals put their life on the line when they do this. Uh, 